on a deserted island, or even worse, maybe in prison. Well, I have. It sucks. <laughs> Let's hope it never, ever happens to you. But if for some reason you are stuck on a deserted island, or you end up in jail for a long time, and you can have only one case of wine to take with you, what would be in it? It's a good question. Now, any of you, please share your hot picks, uh, your, your hot wine picks, rather. I don't need your hot picks. <laughs> but you can send those too if you want. Uh, write to info at winetimetv.net, and I'd be happy to share those on the show as well. The picks, of course, I will keep for myself. Uh, I asked somebody, James King, what he thought. You know, what would be his picks? And, it, you know, it was like pulling teeth. I understand he probably has relationships with many, many wineries and he couldn't necessarily say, this is my favorite, because then he alienates all those other people. But, nonetheless, he did give us some input. I'll share that with you right now. Wine fans, you know he's trying to ask me the question of who's my favorite wine, and that's a very unfair question. You know that, right? So, I'm, I told him that I'm gonna have a mixed case and it's going to be representative of everything that's out there. And what do I mean by that? Yes, for sure. There will be a California cab. It will be full. It will be, you know, cab on steroids. I'm not gonna name the cab, but there will for certain be a high-end, very expensive, 95 plus point cab. Ah. Uh, but you cannot have a collection of wine without going over to Europe. There will be an Italian Brunello. There will be a Burgundy, and certainly DRC, and all of you who know that, you understand why. Uh, there has to be a vintage champagne. <laughs> In that mixed case, I will have to, of course, go over to Portugal. There has to be a port. There has to be something from Spain, a Rioja. Uh, did we cover everything in Europe? Germany. Germany. There needs to be a Riesling from Germany. And, and I'm not gonna give any more details. I think we need to go to the Southern Hemisphere. We need a wine from South Africa. We need a wine from Australia. Shiraz. We need to go into South America. We need wine from Chile. I, I think I don't have too many slots left, so I, I'm gonna come back off the West Coast and I'm gonna take some more California wines. I need to go to um, Sonoma. I need to go up to Oregon and get a Pinot. And I need to go to Washington. So yes, uh, story be told, I lived in the state of Washington for over eight years, and I have an affinity for the Washington wines. But once again, I'm not gonna mention any, but that would be representative in my mixed case of wine. There would be at least a bottle from every outstanding wine region around the world represented in my mixed case. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, hi. Now, are you someone who believes in statistics? Stats this, stats that. Well, statistics show that 80% of all statistics are just kind of baloney. Now, with that in mind, statistics also show that the two most popular wines generally are Proseccos and Chardonnays. And I, I'm assuming that's based on drinkability. Proseccos are, uh, particularly in Europe where I'm coming from, very, very inexpensive. Uh, readily available. You can really you can get them anywhere at a gas station. Even you can get a really fine bottle of prosecco. It's hard to find a, a refrigerator without a bottle of prosecco in it. Proseccos are also uh, they mix well with syrups and juices and even vodkas. So it's a popular popular drink. Chardonnays, on the other hand, very prevalent in America. Uh, women enjoy them, I think, a lot very fruit forward oftentimes, depending on the brand, of course. So it's no wonder they're very popular. I guess they're considered staple wines for the most part. So of course I had to ask James King his thoughts on those two popular wines. And, uh, this is what he had to say. First wine we selected, and thank 
thanks to our host, was a Prosecco. And I think it's a great, a great wine for someone that's new to the wine experience. And here's why. One, it's very good. Two, it's sparkling. Three, it's relatively inexpensive. I mean, you can get some ex outstanding Proseccos for less than $20 a bottle retail. And three, I mean, it's just refreshing. It's a very easy wine to consume and it can pair well with a number of items that you might want to eat with it. I like it. I haven't tasted this yet, but I ordered it with the expectation that this would be the expression of your classic California Chardonnay. In which most people who drink California Chardonnay, these are the characteristics they look for. That it will be highly oaked and very buttery. And you can certainly smell that. Look at that golden color. Oh my God, it's exactly as I described it. And most of you will love it. So it seems like I'm a fan now of the uh, of Spagatini, the restaurant in Seal Beach, California. No, they're not paying me to say that. They should be. So Rob, you know what? If you're watching the show, and I hope you are, you gotta hook me up next time I'm in your establishment, man, okay? I'm working for you here. Uh, you guys got to check it out as well too. Let me show you about uh, a little bit about what I had to eat. I had a really nice calamari, cost about 16 bucks or so. And uh, actually, I'll just roll the footage so you can see for yourself. We are here at Spaghettini, and uh, I don't know if this is considered Los Salamitos or not. No, this is considered um, Seal Beach. Seal Beach. This is great. James is having jumbo something, French shrimp. shrimp. <laughs> They're prawns. <laughs> How would you describe this dish? It's uh, actually, it's heavy cream, uh, white wine, garlic, and pomeroy mustard. And it's, uh, do you enjoy it? You like this was outstanding. It did not pair with the Rambauer. It didn't, so? Yeah. No, it did not. <laughs> it that Rambauer so. just smacks you in your face. Oh, definitely. And, it paired and I'm better happy with, with the Rambauer. He's happy <laughs> with the Rambauer. <laughs> yeah, but it I'm loving it. With the it's a, uh, it's a, uh, that Rambauer just overpowers any, right. any kind of food over there, so. <laughs> and, I, and I told them, <laughs> that, that is probably your best-selling <laughs> shard on your list. It is. Uh, uh, we, we put on Cuvée Sauvage by the glass, and it, and the Rambauer fans were uh, a little upset. So we had to put Rambauer back on Yeah, because it is your quintessential <laughs> California shard. Hey, I'm loving it. I'm a newbie. Oak, oak. 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 It overpowers everything. So <laughs> you can chew it. It's a meal in itself. Didn't I say that? That's what he said. I said it was a yeah, meal in itself. But you know what? You have that I'm a happy guy. Food. I'm a happy guy, okay? I'm having you're just, calamari. You're stuck over there. <laughs> <laughs> and my rumbawa. <laughs> mm, yummy, yummy. So now you're probably, you're probably hungry as well. So go on out to Spagatini and try the same. Great wines, great food. Awesome entertainment, live entertainment at that.